clear my throat here. So, we're going to talk about thermometers and thermostats. We're going to have a little lesson today on temperature. So what's a thermometer? What's a thermometer? It's something that measures the temperature around itself, right? It's affected by its surroundings. Whatever it's, uh, whatever the elements are <clears throat> around this, around the thermometer, the thermometer will match those elements. A thermostat, on the other hand, is not affected by its surroundings. It reacts according to whatever the temperature has been set, right? Right. A thermostat sets the tone. A thermostat sets the temperature. The atmosphere changes according to the thermostat. The thermostat is not dictated by its surrounding, but the, but the thermostat dictates its surroundings. So we have to ask ourselves, what are we? Are we a thermostat or are we a thermometer? We're going to have fun this morning. Are you controlled by your atmosphere or do you control your atmosphere? Or have you been both in the same day. Yeah. Huh? We all start out the day strong sometimes, yeah. being a thermostat, walking in faith, praying, being strong. Something hits you in the middle of the day, all of a sudden you're a thermometer. Yeah. Someone throws a banana at your car, you go from stat to meter real quick. <laughs> you know? So we all need a little help. But check it out, I'm gonna show you in scripture how the disciples went from being thermometers to thermostats. And Peter had a little flip-flop real quick, but then he went back to being a stat. Because it happens, yeah. right? It happens. Yes. Okay. Yes. So Matthew chapter 8. Matthew. We're going to one of my favorite scriptures. This uh, recording of Jesus calming the storm is in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. That's a little different in, in Mark and Luke than Matthew, but we're going we're gonna to read it out of Matthew. Matthew 8, chapter tw uh, Matthew 8, verse 23. Then Jesus got into the boat and started to cross the lake with his disciples. In, in Mark and Luke, it says that Jesus told them, hey, let's get in the boat and let's go to the other side of the lake. Okay, so we know that Jesus gave a commandment. He said, hey, this is what we're going to do. So the disciples, right? Obedient. Let's get in the boat. Let's go to the other lake. That's what Jesus said. Go to the other side of the lake. Suddenly, a fierce storm struck the lake with waves breaking into the boat, but Jesus was sleeping. So, mm -hmm. have you ever noticed you're praying, you ask for direction from God. God gives you direction. You set out on that direction. All of a sudden, a storm slaps your life. Yeah. Am I the only one that that happens to? Mm -hmm. The disciples were obeying God. Yeah. They were obeying Jesus and going across the lake, and all of a sudden a fierce storm hits them. Listen, don't question whether you heard from God when a fierce storm all of a sudden hits you. Yeah. Don't be like, oh, this must not have been from Jesus because, you know, it's not all uh, jelly beans and gumdrops. Yeah. No, when you obey God, you're going to have some resistance Absolutely. and some things come up against you. Yeah. That's where we got to work that endurance and work that character, right? Work that faith on the inside. Yeah. So, so suddenly, man, they come, storms come suddenly at a lot of times, right? Now we have a choice at that moment. We're going to be a thermometer. We're going to be a thermostat. We got a choice to make. The disciples became thermometers very quickly. Uh, but Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him up, shouting, Lord, save us, we're going to drown. Listen, Jesus was good. That boy's a thermostat. He's like, it don't matter the storm raging. I said we're going to the other side of the lake. We're going to the other side of the lake. What are you boys tripping about? Uh, Jesus didn't say, let's go to the middle of the lake, get caught in this big old storm, and die. <laughs> right? So he's sleeping. He's good. So he's, they say, Lord, save us. We're going to drown. Jesus responded, why are you so afraid? You have so little faith. How'd you like that one, huh? Yeah. Jesus looking at you. Why are you so fearful? Mm -hmm. Why are you so faithless? <laughs> didn't I say we're going to go to the other side of the lake? Yeah. Why are you tripping right now? Why are you being a thermometer? Yeah. You get a, get a little bit of resistance when you obey me. Why don't you be a thermostat and fight through this storm? Control what's on the inside of you. Don't let the elements control the peace that's on the inside of you. We're going to see this. Look at this. Then he got up, 
and rebuked the wind and waves, and suddenly there was a great calm. Why was there a great calm? Because there was a calm in Jesus. Yeah. There was a peace and calm in Jesus, and he said, hey, I don't think so. And all of a sudden, the outside elements and atmosphere came what was on the inside of him. He didn't let the outside elements come in. He released the peace and the calmness that was inside of him. So, so Jesus was good. The storm ain't affecting him in any way. He's got to sleep it out. Listen, sometimes you got to sleep it out. Sometimes you just need to lay down and take a nap. You know, uh, I, I'm all good with that. But he called them Freddy cats. He called them faithless. Man. But hey, he was good. He allowed the peace and the calmness that was inside of him to come out. Now, he had to calm the storm for him because they weren't strong enough to make it through, right? We went over this a few weeks ago. He had to calm the storm for him because they weren't strong enough to make it through. They're going to have to do it again, right? Mm -hmm. If Jesus has to come and rescue you out of something, listen, there's strength there. There's endurance there. There's faith there. There's growth in the storm. We've got to learn how to fight a little bit. That's right. We gotta learn how to gotta come up against some resistance and just keep going. Yeah. If he's gotta rescue you out of that, you're gonna have to do it again. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. But he'll bring it on later down the road. Yeah. Let you grow up a little bit, have some smaller battles, you know, mature a little bit. But then he's gonna put you back in that storm. So now the disciples had to weather that storm again. But we see them in a very different situation. We see different disciples in the next storm. Go to Matthew 14. The disciples went from being thermometers to thermostats. Now, it took a little bit of time. Uh, Matthew 14, verse 22. It took a little bit of time. Now, listen, there's probably about a year between these two storms right here. There's probably about a year of ministry that the disciples have been walking with Jesus, or close to a year, from, from the storm we just read to the storm we're going to read right now, okay? So, so I just wanted to set the stage there. They, he's already sent them out. After the first storm, after they've been called faithless and fearful, you know, uh, and Freddy cats, he's, he, since then he's sent them out, and they've preached the gospel, they've raised the dead, they've cast out devils, they've healed the sick, you know what I'm saying? They've already gone and done ministry. They've seen a lot more... Uh, recorded. They've seen a lot more ministry that Jesus has done. They've spent a lot more time with Jesus. Yeah. We see a different disciple here today yeah. in this passage because they spent time with Jesus. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and isn't that what the leaders of the whatever city it was said about uh, said about the disciples? Oh, it was in Jerusalem. They said about the disciples. They could tell that they had spent time with Jesus. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we see a different group of disciples here. Verse verse twenty two. Immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake while he sent the people home. Um, after sending them home, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. Listen, let me, let me just say this. Here's not the message, but let me just drop this in real quick. Don't trip if you, lose, if you miss the boat. Don't trip if you miss the boat. Go spend time with God, and He's going to empower you to walk on water and catch up to the boat. Mm -hmm. Okay? Don't trip about missing the boat. Just go spend time with the Father. We're thermostats, right? We're not thermometers. We're thermostats. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Verse 23. No, verse 24. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land, for a strong wind had risen, and they were fighting heavy waves. Did you see that, though? Mm -hmm. They were fighting heavy waves. It doesn't say they were fearful. It doesn't say they were crying out for help like they were on the last time. They were fighting. Mm -hmm. They were fighting against the opposition. Because remember, when you believe God and get in the boat and head to the other side, the storm's going to meet you. There's going to be some opposition. We see it every time. Mm -hmm. Right? So, we, so now they're fighting. Listen, I could just, here's gospel according to Ryan, right? I could just imagine Peter. Dude's rowing. He's like, I am not going to be called faithless again. I'm not going to be called fearful again. I am not no scared. Hey, Thomas, I don't need your doubt right now. Pick up that oar and get to rowing. Come on, Thomas. I don't want to hear it now. We're, you know, Jesus said we're going to the other side of the lake. We're going. They're fighting. Yeah. Right? 
They're like, hey, Jesus said we're doing it, yeah. you know? And so Peter, I just see Peter's the ringleader, you know, because he's the one that always sticks his foot in his mouth anyway. <laughs> like, we are not getting rebuked again by Jesus. I'm bound and determined to make it through this storm no matter what. That's a thermostat right there. Amen. Peter's stepping up, right? Because he spent some time with Jesus. Mm -hmm. He was good. He's like, man, I got this storm licked. <laughs> but what happens next? Uh-huh. Peter thought he was a little bit too much faith, full of faith, didn't he? So about 3 o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them walking on the water. Don't worry if you miss your boat. God will make you walk on water to get back to it. When the disciples saw him walking on water, they were terrified. And in their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. Hey, listen, I'll give them that one. Okay, I'll, I'll give them that one right there. I'm going to... I ain't going to down them for, for, for being all afraid about someone coming to walk. I'd freak out too, you know. i freak out too. So I'll give, hey, and even Jesus gave them that one. Look it, look it. But Jesus spoke to them and said, don't be afraid. Take courage. It's me. Yeah. I'm here. It's me. Don't worry about it. Even Jesus gave them that one, you know. So check it out. He keeps going. Then Peter, full of faith. Right? Yeah. He's all proud of himself. He's like, Lord, I've, ran, I've been the ringleader. I, 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 I kicked that doubt out of Thomas. He's been rolling. Hallelujah. You know, finally got Judas to stop counting money, and he picked up a pail and started bailing out some water. You know, I've been rolling, keeping this thing going. We've been fighting, Lord. Yeah. You know, we've been good. Hey, I'm feeling good. Tell me to come walk out on that water with you. Yeah. How about that, Jesus? If that's really you, tell me to come to you. Listen. If you ask the Lord to stretch your faith, he's going to let you stretch your faith. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So Jesus is like, all right, he knows what's going to happen. He's like, all right, come on, Peter. Mm -hmm. So what happens? Let's keep reading. Then Peter called them, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Peter, come on. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. I can just see it, man. All the other disciples. <laughs> Wow! Check out Peter! Right? Peter out there, bam, man of faith right there. Even got an oar, chucks the oar down, does like an oar mic drop. You know what I'm saying? In the <laughs> boat. Boom! Out there, out there walking on water. Hey, he went from thermostat to thermometer real quick. Check yeah. this out. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Took his eyes off of Jesus. Yeah. When you take your eyes off of Jesus and look at your surroundings, your surroundings are going to get in you. Mm -hmm. But you keep your eyes on Jesus, who's the light of the world, right? Yes. And the Bible says that our eye is the lamp to our body. So if we're looking at the light, we're going to be full of light, and light's going to shine out of us, and the storm's going to eventually go away. We're going to make it through. We're going to keep rowing. We're going to keep fighting, right? Our faith and our strength and our endurance is going to grow, and we're going to make it through. Or we could look at the storm and all the waves around us, and now, and, and now the storm and the waves is coming on the inside, and Peter began to sink. The eye is the lamp of the body. Yeah. What are you focusing on? Yeah, if you're going to be a thermostat, you've got to focus on Jesus. He can't do it without his strength. He can't do it without his word, without yeah. his grace. Yes. <clears throat> without Jesus, we are thermometers. We are messed up people. So, um, uh, so he said, same Lord. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? I can just see Peter. Hey, man. <laughs> and I had it. I thought I was good this time. I got rebuked again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, poor Peter. Yeah. He's just a rascal, I tell you. But you know what? There's grace. There, there's grace in strength. You know, there's grace when you reach out and try to stretch your faith. Yeah. Jesus picked him up. He didn't let him sink. Yeah. He picked him up. Yeah, he might have rebuked him a little bit, but he picked him up and he put him in the boat. You know, there, there's there, there's grace there. Let's let's uh. When they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. Then the disciples worshipped worship him. You really are the Son of God, they, ex they explained. They, or they, uh, you really are, they exclaimed. You really are the Son of God, they exclaimed. Peter was so close. So close. But you know what? Even though he got rebuked for having little faith, before the last storm, he said, why do you have no faith? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? So his faith had grown because mm -hmm. he had some victories. Mm -hmm. 
He had victory in the storm. That storm didn't have him. That boy was rowing. He was coaching everybody too. Yeah. There's faith in victory. Yeah. And even walking on water for those few seconds or however long it was, you know that built that brother's faith. Mm -hmm. It built my faith. Yeah. Whether I sunk a few seconds later or not, like, hey, I held water for five seconds. You know, you get wet when you walk across the puddle. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, that's faith water. building. That's victory right there. Yeah. That's faith building. So there's faith in victory. Victory stretches your faith. Mm -hmm. When we have wins, hope rises up. Faith rises up. You get excited. Yeah. You know, now you really want to keep your eyes on Jesus more. Because you want another victory. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's the word, man. Amen.